Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. The title of today's webinar is Powering Up with Plant-Based Menus and Marketing. My name is Julie Bora pitchford and I am a Nutrition Education Consultant with the California Department of Education Nutrition Services Division. It is a great pleasure to have teamed up with the Humane Society of the United States to bring you this webinar. The Humane Society of the United States is doing phenomenal work to help schools implement plant-based meals in California. Today's webinar is the second in a three-part series on plant-based meals in schools. We hope you will join us again in two weeks for our final webinar. As you can see, we have some great presenters lined up. At this time, I would like to introduce Christy Middleton from the Humane Society of the United States, who will be moderating the webinar. She is also one of our panel presenters. Christy is the Managing Director of Food and Nutrition, where she oversees the organization's efforts to help institutions add more plant-based options to their menus. Christy is also the author of the book Meatless, Transform the Way You Eat and Live One Meal at a Time. Christy, take it away. Thank you so much, Julie, and thank you to everyone who has tuned in for this presentation. And um, just to add that we look forward to hopefully hearing from you all next week and, and seeing our, for the next webinar, rather, and we'll have the last webinar available as an archive. I'm really excited to be joined today by Fred Espinosa, who is the Managing Production and Acquisition for Food and Nutrition Services for San Diego Unified School District, which started doing Meatless Monday back in 2013. And we look forward to hearing from Fred about their experiences and what they've learned as a result of starting their program. And then we'll also hear from Miguel Virial, who is the Food and Nutrition Services Director for Nevada Unified School District in Marin County in Northern California. And Miguel has been working for many years to improve nutrition for kids and their families and has transformed the program at Nevada Unified School District, partnering with local farms, public agencies, nonprofit groups, and many more to create a culture around nutrition and wellness. So we're looking very much forward to hearing their presentations. But first, I'm going to dive into a little bit more. I'm sorry, I didn't show you their pictures. Um, I'm going to dive into a little bit more about marketing your programs. Because as we know, there's so much involved in getting the word out about programs. And unfortunately, while many of you are doing such incredible work, in both providing nutrition services to your guests, but also educating them about the benefits of eating more plant strong meals, uh, more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and others, oftentimes this information just isn't really out there and understood by the community. So I have some tips today for getting the word out about your programs and engaging your customers. So as many people know, when we talk to our guests about the benefits for eating more healthful foods and we serve really delicious foods, they do get very excited about that. But many people, after the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act went into effect, experienced, experienced um, some bad sales, or we saw a lot of food waste. And so there was research that was done that was published by the American Academy of Pediatrics that looked at what we could do to help with marketing fruits and vegetables in schools. So they did some research at some Vermont schools, and what they found was that in schools that put up TV segments, uh, statistically, they saw a statistically insignificant increase in vegetable consumption. But if there were schools that decorated banners, they actually saw 90% more students taking vegetables. However, if those banners were paired with the TV advertisements, they actually saw a 240% increase in vegetable consumption. So we know that schools don't have a tremendous budget for marketing. Uh, however, there are some really simple things, free resources that are available, very simple things that any school can do to help with marketing their Plant Strong programs and getting the word out about the benefits of eating more fruits and vegetables. These are just an assortment of some of the free resources that are available. If you want banners, there are banners available from both the Meatless Monday campaign and through our work at the Humane Society. 
We also have videos that are available that you could play on a digital display in cafeterias, including some that are more appropriate for high school students and others that are better for your younger audiences. And these are things that have been showed on the digital display as well as on morning announcements or posted on websites. In addition, there are posters available featuring stars who you might not recognize but who your students will, like Holland Roden from Teen Wolf or Laura Morano who is on a Disney TV show called Austin and Alley. And again, these may not be familiar names or faces, but if you talk to your students about who these people are, they really do get excited and they know who these familiar faces are. We also have posters featuring the food itself. And you may notice that here in this um, slide, it says lean and green. And I just want to pause for a moment to talk about what to call your program. So Meatless Monday is a popular program that's been around in its most recent iteration since 2003, and it's promoted by the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health as a way to help with ensuring more humane, more sustainable, and healthier options are available. Now, many schools, for operational reasons, can't do a Meatless Monday because if you were on our last webinar and you heard from Oakland Unified, you know that maybe they're, they want to serve more fresh fruits and vegetables for Meatless Monday, and it might be hard to do that with prep being done on Friday or even earlier the week before. So many schools are opting to use lean and green and choosing a different day of the week to make meatless, or perhaps using that as an umbrella for your entire campaign. There are lots of different monikers or iterations that you could use. Lean and green is just one example, as is Meatless Monday. But whatever you decide to call it, we have marketing materials that are available from you um, that would include promoting the health benefits, promoting the environmental benefits, or beyond that. There are also leaflets and flyers that are available from the Meatless Monday campaign and others that the Humane Society has that are available in both English and Spanish that would be great for older students, for parents, faculty, and staff or community members about why you're doing your program. There are some school districts that have also teamed up with celebrities. This is Daniela Monet, who was on a TV show called Victorious, and she went to a school district in Texas to kick off their Lean and Green Meatless Monday. This was at Houston Independent School District where they were doing it on a Monday, but because of their customer population, they decided to call their program Lean and Green. This is a banner at Richmond Public Schools in Virginia. And while they couldn't bring in a Hollywood celebrity to the district, what they decided to do was bring in some local celebrities. These are some vegan bodybuilders who they brought in to talk to students about the health benefits of eating a more plant-based diet and that you can be big and strong and get all of your fuel from vegetables. And as you can see, the staff also participated wearing their Meatless Monday aprons. And you can make your staff the celebrities. So we have Lean and Green as well as the Meatless Monday aprons that are available for your frontline staff. And these are free, so you can just reach out to me using the contact information at the very end of our presentation to um, request some of these or other materials that I've shared with you here. And other schools have used their menus. So menus are a great way to get the word out about your programs. These are things that are very popular at most school districts. I've heard that the school lunch menus are some of the most popular web pages that parents and community members go to. As you can see from Tracy Unified School District, they use the Meatless Monday logo to identify that every Monday is meat free. Other school districts have done special seasonal menus like Dallas Independent School District did in Texas where they put together a really beautiful menu for their Earth Day celebration to highlight their Lean and Green program and talked about some of the other promotions that they were doing to advocate for sustainability on their campuses. These are some menus from San Ysidro School District down in the San Diego area where they're doing Meatless Monday. And as you can see, they have logos um, every Monday featuring the fact that it's Meatless Monday. And they've done some other fun things to promote Meatless Monday as well, which I'll share with you here in just a moment. 
Other school districts might send home a flyer to promote what they're doing in the cafeteria, and this is from Sarasota County Schools in Florida, where they kicked off Meatless Monday and then they put together a flyer that promoted some of the other things that they were working on on campus, including their Chef's Move to School program, which they actually paired with Meatless Monday, bringing local chefs together to help with creating recipes and menus using their meatless meals. And then they put together this flyer to send home to parents to alert them about the programs that they were doing. They also sent out a news release to local news media. And this is something that a lot of schools do to help get the word out. In addition to reaching parents that are getting your newsletters, perhaps you're reaching other community members as well, so that it's not just the school that's participating, but you're helping with reaching a much wider audience. And some schools like Los Angeles Unified School District, which we've worked with to start Meatless Monday several years back, we put together a news release and they got some great national and local media coverage, as did um, Lompoc Unified School District when they started doing their Meatless Monday, as well as other school districts in the Ventura County area. And this is um, media coverage that would reach tens of thousands of people, including many of your guests and customers. Some school districts are using social media. So I mentioned Houston Independent School District, which started doing a Meatless Lean and Green Day several years ago. And when they kicked off their program, they started doing it very quietly, quietly at first. So they wanted to acquaint their students to the meals that they would be serving before they really started shouting it from the rooftops. And then once they had identified some of the menu items that were more popular, they put those into their cycle menu rotation more frequently and then used Facebook uh, local media as well as other social media to get the word out about their program. You may be on Twitter, so perhaps this would be a good way to get the word out using Meatless Monday hashtag to talk about what's on your menu as Oakland Unified School District has done back when it was doing Meatless Monday, or Rio School District did using um, the Meatless Monday hashtag to promote the fact that they had a delicious three bean chili on their menu. We also have a lot of great share graphics available that I'll show you in just a moment, so you don't have to think about what to promote every single week. Or you could take a picture of the food and post it on Instagram or on Twitter. This is another uh, image from San Ysidro School District where they did a totally vegan meal for their Meatless Monday, and they used Pro Health Pasta, which is a chickpea-based pasta, in addition to some white beans to promote Meatless Monday. And these are some of the sample share graphics that I mentioned. So we realize that many of you are incredibly busy, probably all of you are incredibly busy, and don't often have time to think about what we're going to post on Twitter or on Facebook today. And so we have lots of sample images that you could use, including simple recipe swaps or meal swaps or some featuring Hollywood celebrities who your students might be familiar with. And I send out an email every single Friday with an idea for something that you could post on Meatless Monday. And if you're interested in signing up for that, it comes Friday. It's just a couple of quick sentences as well as a simple idea for something that you could put on your social media page. You would just sign up at bit.ly slash mmidea. And I can repeat that toward the end of this if anybody is interested. As well, you have a prime real estate on your website where people are going to dig through, through your menus. So this is from San Ysidro where they talked about why they're doing Meatless Monday and they put information up on their website about it and there's sample text available and much more on our website which I'll share with you. And this is from the Boulder Valley School District in Colorado where they also put information on their website about why they're participating in a Meatless Monday. And you can give a lot of information or you can just provide a little bit of information. It's all up to you and how big you want to go with it or how quiet you want to keep it. This is from Dallas School District where they found that participating with students and getting them involved in the menus was really critical to ensuring the success of their program. So they invited students to participate in some recipe testing and the kids who were involved were actually much more excited about the food that was being served than others who weren't. And then these students served as ambassadors. And that's something that we've seen many other school districts do. For example, in San Ysidro, 
They talked about getting um, new recipes on Mondays during lunchtime and giving out samples, letting kids try the food, and then getting their feedback so you can decide what you want to put on the menus. And then the students who actually try the food have a tremendous influence on others who are coming down the line or who may be um, interested in trying it, but they want somebody else to be um, the, the um, guinea pig and try the food first. So they found that taste testing and sampling was really critical to their program. And then they also, as I mentioned before, did a vegan day. Uh, they had a few different delicious menu items and they did a big promotion, sent out invites to let people know about what they were doing in their cafeterias. We also have promotional materials like stickers available, uh, which we could send over to you free of charge. Some people give them out to the students, others might put them on their plant-based products to promote them. So we'll be happy to send those over to you. And then there are special events that you can do, like Atlanta Public Schools did in Georgia when they celebrated Earth Day this year. They made it entirely plant-based, um, putting out flyers and talking about the health and environmental benefits of eating more plant-based meals. And they used the Lean and Green moniker, as you can see here. Another freebie that we have are these superhero trading cards that feature characters like Betty Blueberry or Peggy the Pinto Bean and talk about the health benefits of eating more plant-based foods. And these are things that you could give out during a special event or for your Meatless Monday kickoff. So just in summary, these are just a variety of the ideas that you can use to get the word out about your program. From stickers to tabling, trivia, prizes, offering workshops, doing lunch and learns, putting up signage at your stations, doing social media posts, taste testings, culinary demonstrations like the one featured here are great ways to not only talk to your guests, but also give them an opportunity to try the food, which is really critical to the success of any program is having delicious food. So you can shout it from the rooftops like our friends at the Valley Hospital did when they rented costume mascots and got aprons printed, balloons printed, and put up signs everywhere, or perhaps do something a little more subtle and quiet. But whatever you decide to do, we have lots of tools and resources for you. These are some sample letters to staff, to parents, and others that are available in our toolkits at humanesociety.org slash mmtoolkit. There you can also find sample uh, web text and much, much more. So I encourage you to check that out. And I would just like to uh, wrap up by sharing that, of course, we have tremendous influence over the kids who are eating with us every single day. Something fun to do with them is sit down with them and talk to them and find out more about why they're eating a certain way and what food they'd like to see more of. And, you know, I, I feel like I've said this many times before, but everybody who's tuned in, who's working in child nutrition services, you have an opportunity, and as this quote says, um, great power involves great responsibility. You have not only great power via your purchasing power, but great power to influence the way that your students are eating, not just today when they're with you in the cafeteria, but for many years to come. It's not just a great responsibility, but it's a great opportunity, and I encourage every single one of you to seize that opportunity and use it as a chance to teach these kids about the delicious food that's available as well as the way that they can make an impact by choosing more healthy plant-based options. And I look forward to working with you to do so. So I would love to now turn things over to Fred Espinoza, who is going to be presenting um, what they're doing at the wonderful San Diego Unified School District. Take it away, Fred. Good afternoon. Anyway, thanks for having us. Uh, we're very happy to be here. Um, I also want to introduce Amy Garfinkel, who's going to help me today with the presentation. And really what we want to cover is two things. Uh, basically what we do operationally with plant-based foods and then how we reach out and do nutrition education, um, garden to cafeteria programs, et cetera, around plant-based foods. Um, so I thought I'd start by giving you I thought, I thought I'd start by giving you a little bit of information about our school district. Um, we are the second largest school district in California. We have over 275 sites. We're in beautiful San Diego. And 60% of our students qualify for free and reduced meals. Um, the meal parts or day parts that we serve are breakfast, lunch, supper. We have a very robust summer program. 
a winter and spring program when children are out of school. Um, we have 60 plus BIC programs and over 120 supper programs that we feed children in San Diego. Um, so what does that equate? Well, each day we do about 130,000 total meals, um, which equates to over 22 million meals per year. And with those 22 million meals, we try really hard to feature local California fruits, vegetables and grains, and plant-based foods um, in, many of the, in as many of these meals as possible. Um, California for food for California kids, buying local is something that is part of our culture at San Diego Unified. Um, on average, about 30% of the meals selected are vegetarian. 25% um, at the elementary level and about 35% at the secondary level. Um, we offer vegetarian options daily on the majority of our 40 plus different menus uh, that are served in the district. So, what does the life of a veg vegetarian look like at San Diego Unified? So, a couple photos of what we offer for breakfast. Um, many choices are plant-based, and at San Diego Unified, um, we really believe in trying to give options that the children will like. So these are some of the popular items that we've done really well with. A breakfast burrito, lots of local fresh, and fresh fruits and vegetables, some organic from local farmers, um, branded products such as Nutrigrain bars. Uh, the French toast stick has been very popular for us and actually has went on our lunch menu also. Um, as a breakfast for lunch item, and scrambled eggs and tots takes you back to the traditional comfort food. But I would have to say that probably the most popular item we've done has been our yogurt parfait. And we do yogurt parfait bars, and I, at the secondary level especially, we've had really good success with this program. And we use commodity frozen fruit, mostly blue, blueberries, strawberries, and peaches, to construct these parfaits. I do I'm sorry, I think I'm doing good. Um, okay, next. Uh, this is just a picture, and it's kind of a funny one. We say around here the Chargers may have left San Diego, but fresh fruits, vegetables, and salad bars certainly have not. And we're very proud of our salad bars in San Diego. Not so much the Chargers anymore. We have close to 400 salad bars at about 98% of our schools, elementary, um, secondary. We developed a really cool salad bar manual to help our folks in the field um, make sure that we're consistent in what we do. We cover all five colors of vegetable as man mandated by the regs. I think a couple cool things that we do on our salad bars is first of all, we offer mostly fresh. Um, we've also, if you see, put a flex slot in there. And what that do, does, it gives the opportunity for our site leaders and cafeteria teams to select an item that they want to use at their school that the children will like. Um, so we do the flex slot every day. And on Wednesday, we feature our harvest of the month, which is we go out and contract with local farms, mostly 25 miles um, within the, the San Diego borders, and we buy sometimes the whole farm. Um, sometimes we'll buy all the pluots, we'll buy all the kumquats, we'll buy all the persimmons, and we feature our harvest of the month every single Wednesday throughout the year to try to educate children about fruits and vegetables that they may see in the future and may not understand. And Amy's going to talk a little bit about how we educate them later. So, um, lunch. Along with those close to 400 salad bars, um, we feature vegetarian every day, like I said, on all 40 menus. Um, these are some of the items that we have on right now that are pretty popular. Uh, sun butter and jelly, we don't do peanuts here at the elementary level, so we feature sun butter. We do a very nice vegetarian burger, and this year we called it the California Veggie Burger, and we added fresh avocado, tomato, and a chipotle um, mayo to it to really give it a give it a kick and put the best veggie burger forward that we could, that we can. 
as I mentioned earlier, the uh, whole grain French toast sticks were so popular that we kind of piggybacked on quick service and we put them on for breakfast, for lunch, and meatless Mondays, which, as Christy said, we started about three years ago. Um, and that has been a really popular item for us on Meatless Mondays. Uh, Meatless Mondays is something we deeply believe in. We offer it at all 140 plus elementary schools every single week. And I have to say that we've had pretty good success with the program in terms of participation. We've come up with some really cool items, vegetarian chilies, um, Jacob's fried rice, um, the French toast sticks, Baja hummus plates, to try to keep our, our children engaged in the program. And Amy will tell you a little bit later how we teach them about the importance of plant-based foods and their impact on the environment. This is something that we started uh, this year, or actually last year. We do limited time offers, and I noticed on uh, Christy's slide there was lots of California Thursday little stickers on there. Uh, what we did is we come up with five different specials for our team to select that they want to offer in their school so they have some choice. And we also feature three composed salads that they can choose. And we try to make these out of all California ingredients and local uh, fresh fruits and produce. So this is some of them that we've had really good uh, success with. And these go mostly on the flex slots that I was talking about on those salad bars to give our staff something to engage the children in with new um, opportunities. Uh, I would say the most, uh, probably the most successful of these has definitely been the Mango Berry Blast, the cit Citrus Explosion, and the Cranberry Apple Delight, and the Minty Melon Sensation. I want to thank our folks from the Center of Eco Literacy for helping us with that one, and it just went on actually just this week. So. We'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that um, as far as how it went. Kids create recipe contests. Um, we quite often focus on, we call it um, food for kids by kids, and we have recipe contests. And the recipe contest this year specifically focused on Meatless Monday. Um, Meatless Monday is something that we're always looking for opportunities where, where you can engage kids to try new types of food that they may not have tried in the plant-based category. Now, the winner this year was the rice and bean quesadilla, and it was made by a first grader, I believe, probably with some help from his mother, I would imagine. And uh, again, that just started, and we'll let you know how it goes, but we really believe in letting the kids have a say, and these are both uh, Kids Create Recipe Contest winners, the Ava's Avocado Salad made by an eighth grader, at um, Scripps Ranch and the uh, rice and bean quesadilla. So Meatless Monday was something that we feel very strongly about and letting kids get involved in creating the food that they're going to eat. So some of our beliefs. Um, so we really don't believe in tricking students by hiding the meat. So we're not a fan of meatless meat and duckless duck and chickenless chicken. Uh, we really try to let kids know what they're eating, and we try to spend our commodity dollars um, for things that kids will recognize and see down the road. So we'd rather introduce them to other protein sources, such as beans, um, and then local fruits and black bean burgers and proteins and things like that, instead of trying to trick them into eating plant-based foods. So I think with that, I'm going to introduce Amy Garfinkel. And Amy, if you could see her picture, you'd be much happier that than mine at the beginning of the presentation. But anyway, Amy is our farm to school specialist and our nutrition education specialist. And she's a fantastic member of our team. And she's going to tell you a little bit about how we promote this, how we do outreach, and some of the great nutrition education programs we have. Amy. Okay, thank you, Fred. So um, the main vehicle for our nutrition, education, outreach, and marketing is our Farm to School program. So as Fred mentioned, we have our Harvest of the Month program where we work with local farms to feature a new local fruit or vegetable on the salad bar each month. So this month in November, we just started serving organic sweet persimmons from a farm in Rainbow, California. 
Um, and in order to help the schools and cafeteria and teachers educate their students about these fun produce options, we create farmer cards for um, the cafeteria to post on the salad bars. And then we also create in-house virtual farm field trip videos so the students can learn about the farmers who grew their food. We also have a farm to school newsletter that we, sell out, that we send out monthly. Um, and this features nutrition education highlights, school garden highlights, as well as resources. And we include updates about our healthy food and um, as well as the program opportunities we offer. We also have an active social media presence on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which is a great way to engage our community in our work. We offer nutrition lessons to all of our schools through a program called Day of Nutrition Ed. Um, and that's where I visit classrooms to teach interactive lessons in which students learn how to make healthy food choices both at home and in the cafeteria. Um, and then taste tests. So at a few schools, we provide the harvest of the month to teachers so they can conduct classroom taste tests and mini nutrition lessons with their students. This is a really great way to promote what we're serving because students try it in their classroom and then want to get it on the salad bar during lunch. And then a program we're really proud of is Garden to Cafe. So this has been around since 2010 in our district, and we certify school gardens to serve their garden-grown fruits and vegetables on their school salad bars as part of the National School Lunch Program. We've seen that this can increase lunch participation because students get excited about eating what they grew from the salad bar. This slide just shows um, a few of the wonderful local and regional farmers who we have worked with over the years. Uh, mostly through our Harvest of the Month program. And then I love this slide because one of the best parts of this work is seeing our students enjoy fresh, healthy, locally sourced foods. And we find that our partners love seeing this as well. So we make sure to feature photos like this on our social media and in our newsletters. And we also market our work to the community through these fun truck wraps that are featured on our food delivery trucks as they drive throughout San Diego. So that's it, and for more information, please visit our website and social media pages. Uh, we want to thank you so much for having us, and I'll now hand it over to Miguel. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to join all of you uh, today for the uh, Meatless Monday discussion and our efforts in educating our community and our schools uh, on Meatless Monday. Uh, this first slide is, um, I just wanted to point out something at the bottom there. Food group boss, I had a nine-year-old kid at one of the schools um, walk up to me and he says, I know who you are. And he said, and I said, who, who am I? He says, you're the food group boss. So I've been using that term uh, in my presentation because I thought that was pretty funny. Um, full disclosure, I just wanted to say, you know, I was a, myself personally a meat eater for 48 years before com uh, converting to a complete plant-based lifestyle. And it took me about seven, seven years from the time I started to truly understand the food system uh, and the time I connected to a plant-based lifestyle. My only regret is that I did not start sooner. So I really try to walk with what I talk. Okay, so a little bit about our district. Uh, it's a, a smaller school district, but it's in a beautiful part of the country. It's just north of San Francisco. We have about 700, 800 students. As you can see, two high schools, one continuation school, Two little schools in elementary school, we have about 38% free and reduced. That number used to be about 16% uh, in 2002 when I started. We serve on the average, or we were serving about 2,200 lunch meals and 1,300 breakfasts, as you see. So not a big school district, uh, but uh, certainly a, a lot of work that we can do. So I want to start with this slide, uh, uh, the, uh, my, the mindset, because as I just said, that you know the, where we're located, uh, you would think that the mindset would be uh, uh, focused on health and nutrition uh, just because of the area that we live in. But in, in 2002, that's not what I found when I first started working here. It was much, much different. Uh, in addition uh, to, to that, uh, we had um, food was not viewed uh, from an equity lens, which is something that we've been trying to promote, uh, equity being a, a a word that's used in education quite a bit these days. I want to tell the story, and you're trying to get this slide to move forward, uh, of how the Nevada Unified uh, School District uh, Food Service Department made inroads to local healthy uh, food uh, 
using meat-free dishes uh, in an area of the country where you would think, as I said earlier, you would expect people to think that way already. Uh, so in 2002, when I started uh, here in, in this school district, uh, the food service program did not look any different than many other programs that I've observed around the country, uh, heavily influenced by uh, by industry in terms of highly processed foods in our schools. Uh, I mean, so much so that as we started to remove some of these highly processed foods from our program, uh, we estimated that we removed an average of around 36 tons of sugar every year from our program since 2004. The other thing that uh, was quite evident was that, again, in 2002, there was no locally grown food served in the schools. Even though we're surrounded by many farms and 100% and of them all grow organic produce. Um, the uh, other thing that I noticed at the time was that our facilities uh, were terribly lacking in infrastructure uh, to store, prep, and serve local foods. We now have uh, built, uh, through bond programs, uh, four new kitchens, uh, and we're actually uh, going to have all our kitchens be uh, renovated and modified, so they're all full, full production kitchens here in, in the next uh, 10, uh, 10 years. So where do we start? Well, um, in 2002, it was a matter of re-educating, not only uh, myself personally, but also the community. So um, it was literally tr making people aware that, that uh, decisions uh, about food can have a positive or very negative consequence on our health, environment, and planet, as Christy was saying earlier. Uh, so that, that simple message was we were trying to get it out to all of our schools uh, and to our community by simply saying that we connected the three C's, the cafeteria, the classroom, and the community. So where, where did we start? So we started by simply having our first organic school meal uh, that included local produce from our, from our farms. Uh, and it was honestly at the request of one of our farmers. He said, hey, Miguel, do you think we can have an organic um, meal made from local foods for our students? I said, sure. I said, that sounds simple enough. So we invited people from the community uh, that were interested in, in uh, providing local uh, foods, uh, produce uh, to our kids. Uh, and we talked about the work that we were doing. Uh, in terms of the benefits to the school and the, the homes and, the, like I said, the entire community. So, uh, but we couldn't do it alone, so we needed to also engage our, our staff. So we were bringing the, the farmers into the schools, but uh, it was just as important for me to bring our staff out to the farms. So we started bringing our staff to the farms early on uh, to hold staff developments out there, meet the farmer, uh, learn where the food's coming from, understand uh, the connection back to the community. And this has been, this has been very, this been, it has been invaluable for us. We also included um, the Humane Society in our training at when we go out to different locations uh, and, and pre prepare, for example, uh, meatless uh, Monday recipes out on site. Isn't that a beautiful site? Uh, who wouldn't be inspired to? want to prepare meatless uh, recipes. Uh, and then we also, uh, over the years, have been expanding our salad bar. So that was a, a, uh, a nice segue into uh, pr promoting more fresh local uh, foods in, in our salad bars uh, and making sure that we were uh, uh, providing as many local sources as, as possible uh, to our kids. So. Uh, we like to say that we were uh, meatless before meatless was cool. So in 2008, we eliminated all red meat from our menus, uh, and we haven't served it since. Uh, and then in 2011, as we were, uh, you know, just going around the state listening to others, we learned about the Meatless Monday campaign, and it was just a, a good fit to, in terms of the work that we were doing already in terms of uh, educating not only our students, but as I said earlier, our community. And we begin to uh, feature this, our, our Meatless Monday on our, as you can see here on our, on our website uh, and our social media. We also use uh, Facebook and, and Instagram uh, and Twitter to get the word out uh, to our community as much as possible. 
And so just a few uh, things that we've done in terms of promoting Meatless Monday. I mean, we've been promoting it at all of our K-12 sites. Uh, a plant-powered choice uh, is offered every day to all school sites. As I said earlier, salad bars uh, are also available. There's, we never offer meat choices on our salad bars. We, there's plenty of, uh, as, as Fred was uh, explaining, there's plenty of different uh, colored uh, vegetables and fruits and lots of legumes and beans offered as a meat-meat alternate. Um, we've also reduced uh, uh, the meat on, on many of our entrees by offering beans as a meat alternative. So, for example, for off in the taco, we only offer a one ounce portion of that along with the beans to make up the meat alternate. I, you, you, mentioned, uh, you heard me say earlier uh, equity. Uh, one of the things that our school lunch program has never been able to do is reach 100% of the kids uh, for many reasons. And some of these kids can't afford the school lunch program. Uh, so this year we started a program called uh, Parents, if you want to pack a lunch, be our guest. But we want to make sure that your kids, your children have access to all this local uh, produce as well. And so we started the $1 side salad for all of our students. It was a great promotion for, uh, again, uh, children and for parents uh, and for families saying, you know, you pack the lunch, we will provide, you, provide your children with all the fruits and veggies. Uh, that they want. And we also made this available to our teachers for $2, and that's been uh, very popular with them as well. Uh, and in fact, it's, there's nothing like a school teacher going through the lunch line uh, and eating on, from the salad bar and students looking up and saying, are, are you here eat, eating from the salad bar as well? Uh, you heard Chrissy talk about uh, Meatless Monday posters and so forth. We, we have these uh, throughout the, uh, all of our cafeterias, uh, different banners, depending on the grade level, and that's, that's really helped us over the years. One, another popular thing that we do uh, and when we go to different events is this, the Meatless Monday wheel. We use this wheel for many things, but we use it for, to also promote Meatless Monday. Uh, for some reason, the wheel just attracts everybody. I don't care what, what age you are. They want to come over, spin the wheel, uh, and then, of course, there's the opportunity to educate not only the kids but the families. We, we pass out all kinds of literature. Uh, so it's a great way to promote uh, your program at events outside of the school as well. Uh, every day, this, our kids uh, and, and all the elementary schools exercise 15 minutes before the start of the school day. Uh, so we use this opportunity as well to educate the kids on many fronts, and Meatless Monday is one of those things as well that we, again, give us an opportunity to be in front of all these kids. And, and uh, this is primarily done by our physical education instructors. Uh, at the sites, uh, we have uh, dietetic interns that help us uh, throughout the year whenever they're doing their rotation in terms of promoting Meatless Monday uh, uh, products and uh, doing samplings and so forth. So that's been a, uh, a nice fit for us. Uh, at our back-to-school programs, what we do is uh, for all teachers, for all 400 staff members uh, in our school district, uh, we promote our Meatless Monday uh, breakfast. Um, in this case, we're doing a, a, a parfait yoga, as Fred was saying. This is a very popular item as well, and not only with our students, but with our teachers. Uh, and we use our local uh, 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 organic yogurt company that we promote. The other program I'm really excited about is the wellness in the schools uh, that allows us to provide uh, nutrition, education, and culinary labs uh, to all students in a school. So we actually go during we go into the school, and during the school day, we have a 50-minute culinary nutrition education lab. Uh, they're held by, you see Chef Holly there, uh, and uh, our dietetic interns also participate in, in the training. Uh, this, these last six weeks, we've had, uh, we've reached, uh, we went up to, we went to six different schools, and we reached 3,000 students uh, in, in these 50 minutes culinary labs. Now, there's no way that I can, I would be able to do that with any other type of program. These kids are also going home uh, excited about the, uh, the, uh, the labs. Uh, this month's lab ha happens to be a hummus lab, so the kids learn how to make a simple hummus uh, in, the in, this, in this culinary lab. Uh, and then we're also offering the hummus on the salad bar. Uh, the kids also, are, we send recipes home. Uh, and the kids are going home and uh, excited about making the hummus. And I can't tell how many parents uh, tell us uh, that their kids uh, cannot wait to make whatever it is that we're making. In this case, it's, it's the hummus. And so we go full circle. Now, 
uh, as you can see that uh, uh, our efforts have not been uh, done alone. We've had a large contingent of people helping us along the way, that being students, parents, school teachers, administrators, school board members, farmers, community organizations, uh, community liaisons, local businesses, and universities. Here, we're out here. This is, and all those people I just mentioned are out at this farm promoting a gleaning program that we did one year. Uh, so it has been uh, beneficial to us to include all of our, our partners uh, in this process, knowing that we cannot do this alone and certainly has lots of benefits uh, for not only our, our students in the schools, but the, uh, in their homes and, of course, the community at large. And so with that, uh, that concludes my presentation, and I'd like to um, turn it over to Christy for uh, questions and comments or answers. I'm sure the folks who have tuned in have lots of questions. Hopefully you all just heard what I was saying, uh, but I wanted to say thank you so much to both of our presenters, or all three of our presenters, rather. So we're going to open things up to our questions now. And if you have any questions, over on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a Q&A tab. All you have to do is type in your question and then select the Send button. In the meantime, I have some questions for the panelists. Um, Fred, first of all, the question that I have is, where are your veggie burgers from, or do you make those in-house? You mentioned that there were some of your most popular items, including the, the new California veggie burger that you're doing. Yeah, so, uh, well, the veggie burger itself is a Morningstar product. Um, the bun is a whole grain bun from Colossal Bakery, which is right uh, down the street here. Um, and then the avocados, uh, lettuce, and tomatoes we put on it are all local here from San Diego. Okay, fantastic. And then we, we have a question from an audience member who's asking if they can get the recipe for the Baja hummus. And I can't remember who it was who mentioned the Baja hummus. Is that a recipe that one of you is able to share? Uh, if, well, if you're if uh, if it's us, um, we actually get that product from Truett Brothers okay. in Portland. Okay, yeah, and Truett Brothers is they have a lot of really great products, um, including lots of ready-made hummus and beans. So a good good resource for ready-made products. And then we got uh, we another all, all, okay. all Truett beans on our salad bars too. Um, so ex excellent, excellent uh, family-owned company. Wonderful. Thank you for that information. And we got a question um, where we can find recipes or where can we find recipes. And I'll share that the Humane Society has some wonderful recipes available on our website, which is forwardfood.org slash food service. And there you can download recipes that are available uh, for 100% plant-based. Um, they're all NSLP compliant, and we also have some CACFP recipes. And then if there are some specific recipes that you're looking for from our panelists, anything that they mentioned today, we'll be sharing contact information for everyone who was mm -hmm. featured. And I'm sure they would love it if you would email them directly for the specific resources that they mentioned. Um, Miguel, I have a question for you. I know that you've been promoting Meatless Monday and took the beads off many years prior to that, and I was just wondering if you could share what the reception from your community was, and let's get the elephant out of the room. Was there any pushback from parents or the community about that? Thanks for asking, Christy. Uh, you know, the early on, because I, I don't make these decisions on, on my own, as you, as you, as you well know, um, I contacted our superintendent and uh, our school board, and I said this is a decision that I think that we should move forward with in terms of the uh, removing the red meat because we not only as our local uh, produce in the area but there's there's a lot of uh, cattle <laughs> it's dairy 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 uh, country and cattle country in this area so my my superintendent thought it was a little crazy to even make the suggestion uh, that we remove uh, beef from the menu uh, but at the time I was addressing highly processed foods uh, and eliminating highly processed foods and I had met many farmers already and un understood uh, what they were doing in terms of the their the cattle and you know gra many grass-fed beef uh, operations. But the problem was that uh, we could not afford uh, grass-fed beef, uh, and they knew that they could not afford to sell it to us 
uh, at that price. So early on, uh, we had that collaborative partnership with the farmers, understanding we were both on the same page, and that is, no, we don't think we should be serving a product to the children that's high in hormones and high in antibiotics. Uh, so there was a lot of, uh, of uh, education as well, as there's been all along, uh, not only to, with our schools, uh, but also um, uh, to the community, but many PTA uh, meetings and so forth. So uh, I'd like to say that it's just a matter of, uh, as I said, connecting the three Cs, making sure that everybody in, in that uh, communication loop understands why we're making these decisions. Uh, and so from, a, from an early start, I, I can say that we didn't have a whole lot of pushback. And if there was pushback, you know, or later on, uh, I remember going to some meetings, um, then it wasn't me defending the program. It was somebody else in the room saying, no, these, these decisions were made because of highly processed food items and, and so forth. So, uh, and, and they, they cannot afford grass-fed beef. So it's nice when you can get the community to repeat uh, some of your talking points. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, and Fred and Amy, uh, how about for you? It's, I believe San Diego is the second largest school district in California, very large school district. So um, you probably are hearing from people from lots of different backgrounds. Um, what was the reception to the announcement that you were starting Meatless Monday? Did you get any pushback and how did you respond to that? Uh, well, you know, we worked at, we worked a lot with with you, Christy, in doing this. Um, so thank you for your help in in getting this going. No, no, we really didn't have any pushback, and and we still don't. Um, you know, I would say that you know on the positive side, it's so cool to teach children that um, that there are meatless options and very healthy plant-based foods in which to fuel your body. So we're so glad we could do that. Again, but, you know, on the other side, sometimes getting over the stigma that the only protein out there is meat-based, um, a bit of a challenge, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it pushback. So when we started, the couple things we were looking at was, you know, making sure we educated our staff on, on the benefits of the program, both nutritionally, environmentally, and from a sustainability standpoint, um, making sure we got a lot of media attention in the beginning, and it was all very positive that we were doing this. So, uh, no, it's been, I would not say to anybody that, uh, that you have to worry about negative pushback if you implement a Meatless Monday program. Hey, and I want to throw in one more thing I missed on the presentation. I'm, I'm sitting here in my office, and I'm looking at a bottle of chili lime spice. That's probably been the biggest thing we've done at the secondary level that has increased fruit and vegetable consumption on our salad bars. We, we kind of replicated a tahini spice, made it low sodium, um, chili lime profile, and we put it on our salad bars for our kiddos to sprinkle on their fruits and vegetables. And they like it so much, they take the top off. <laughs> And do it, but it's really it, it it really has increased the amount of fruits and vegetables that the children take from the salad bars. Oh, that's that's a really wonderful tip. And along those lines, Fred, um, you mentioned Truett Brothers. Are there any other prepared foods in the Morning Star Burger? Any other prepared foods for those listening who may not be doing a lot of scratch or speed scratch cooking that you have found to be popular items? Uh, yeah, Green Bellies is someone we work very closely with um, on salad dressings, beans, chili, things like that. Um, Truett Brothers, uh, Brilla Pasta in the grain category has been a very friendly partner of ours. Um, Gobanzo Beans for uh, the roasted chickpea has been a very good partner of ours. Um, Harry's Soups, I'm not so sure they're still in the game, but was really a good partner in developing a, a buildable soup concept. And we worked with a pretty cool company called San Diego Soy Dairy uh, in Tofu's, if, if you're into that. So there's, there's more. Those are just off the top of my head. But lots of good local uh, producers who will help you uh, get California, if, well, if you're in California, California food to California kids and, and healthy products that are, have clean labels. 
Okay, those are our wonderful tips. Thank you, Fred. And we have time for probably about two more questions. If anyone has any uh, for the Q&A, again, the tab is on the right-hand side of your screen. Just type in your question and hit the Send button. We do have a question about the archive for the last webinar, and I suppose you probably will be interested in, in this one in the future webinar that we're doing in two weeks. Um, those, we will post that information. Uh, anybody who has attended these, we will email you to follow up. Um, and we have to ensure that there's a transcript for our webinar, so we'll send out a link after um, those transcripts and the video archive are made available. So thank you for that question, Leah, and if anyone else has questions, then please plug that into the Q&A section here. Um, quick question for you, Miguel. You've been very successful at marketing this campaign, not only to your students, but also to parents and the administration. And I'm just curious if you have any tips for the secrets to your success. You know, I personally, I just think, as I was saying earlier, is that uh, I started just adopting that lifestyle. And I'm not saying it to, to people. In fact, the people that know me uh, know that I don't go around telling people that you should uh, look into a plant place lifestyle yourself. You know, basically, I've just been saying, uh, this is what I've done. This is how, this is what I've seen in my own personal health and improvements uh, over the years. Uh, and, um, and if you do anything differently, uh, it's maybe reduce the, the amount of meat that you're consuming uh, and uh, increase, obviously, the amounts of fruits and veggies that you're adding, uh, that, that you could add to your diet. Uh, but in terms of uh, tips, I think it's, it, People identify um, uh, with with us in terms of the message that we're giving uh, and uh, our own personal experiences. From my opinion, um, in terms of what what they're seeing, the lifestyle that we're living, and and as you said earlier, uh, we all have that responsibility uh, in the schools uh, uh, more more than ever. I mean, we know today. Uh, what we didn't know, 20, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, uh, in terms of uh, the impact of unhealthy foods on our body, the impact of unhealthy foods on our environment, the impact of unhealthy of of uh, how we're, you know, ra raising animals, and the impact that th that negative impact that's having on animals and, and these confined animal feeding lots. So that responsibility, I, I certainly take it serious, and I just would say that I, I think that everybody that I've talked to that I know that is, is in the food service, school food service business uh, also takes it serious, but continue to just walk that walk and, and talk the talk. Thank you, Miguel, and you've definitely done a very good job of that. Um, last question, Fred, you mentioned the recipe contest. It sounds like it's been very successful. Is there information on your website where people can find out uh, more about that and perhaps emulate that, or where could they find that information? We'll let Amy take that one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if there's specific information on our website, but um, the person on our team who's in charge of that program is our um, marketing coordinator. And so if you contact us, then we can put you in touch with her, and she'll get you all that information and resources that we use. Yeah, and we actually, it's pretty turnkey now. We have, a, we have something that we send out to the children that's um, a one-page flyer on on everything to do and how to execute it and, and what we're looking for, whether it's breakfast, meatless Monday, sec secondary lunch, supper, whatever. So we would be happy to share that with anybody who wants it. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for that information. And uh, we appreciate all of our speakers today for sharing these great ideas for powering up with plant-based meals. We hope that everyone who's tuned in has been inspired to incorporate more plant-based meals into your program, as well as get the word out about them. And I've provided our contact information here in case you would like to contact the speakers directly. So this concludes our webinar today. Thank you so much, and please be sure to join us for the next webinar in our series, the final webinar, which is on Wednesday, November 15th, Plant Power in the Kitchen, which will give you additional insight into what to put on your menus and how to menu these Wednesday, November 15th from 1.30 until 2.30 p.m. And just want to let those of you who are interested know that this does account for one hour of professional development and the details are here on the screen. 
and this webinar was also approved by the Commission on Dietetic Registration. So if you are a registered dietitian or a DTR and you're seeking um, some continuing education credits, the information is available here, and you can also download the file. All you have to do is go to bit.ly slash CDE webinar and fill out the form and your certificate will be emailed to you. So thank you all once again for tuning in and we hope that we will see you again in two weeks. Have a great afternoon.